This is a tutorial for the hardware and software for connecting stepper motors to Arduino. For the hardware you'll need four things. You'll need a stepper motor. This one's a NEMA 17 motor. NEMA 17 means the width of the motor is 1.7 inches. You need a power supply. This is a laptop power supply I bought on Amazon. It's 20 volts at 3 amps and would probably drive uh, four of these motors without any trouble. You need a stepper motor driver. That's this little guy here, and it's plugged into an Arduino shield, also purchased on Amazon, uh, that allows you to plug in four of these modules so you could drive four stepper motors from this one shield. The shield is very inexpensive. I'll show you a link to that later. For the software, I'm using an Arduino library called Speedy Stepper. The combination of Speedy Stepper, along with a low voltage motor, a higher voltage power supply, and a micro stepping driver board will give your motor much better performance than the typical Arduino stepping approach. To get started, we need to install the Speedy Stepper library. From the Sketch menu, select Include Libraries, and then Manage Libraries. In the search field, type Speedy Stepper. Then select it. Finally, click Install. Now we're going to write a simple sketch. The first thing we do is include the Speedy Stepper library. Next, we need to define a few pin numbers that are used by the Arduino. The Speedy Stepper library generates two signals that come from the Arduino and go to the motor driver board. The first one is step, and the second one is direction. Step gets clocked one time for each step the motor turns. Direction tells the motor which way to go, either clockwise or counterclockwise. You'll notice I defined one other pin. That's this guy. This is the enable pin. This shield has one pin coming from the Arduino that enables and disables all the stepper motors. So we need to be sure to enable that pin or none of the motors will move. Now we create the stepper objects. You'd make one of these for each motor in your project. For example, if you had two motors, you might call one stepper X and one stepper Y, but we are only going to have one motor in our project, so I'm just going to call it stepper. Now we build our setup and loop functions. The first thing I'm going to do is enable that pin that we talked about earlier. Here I'm defining the enable pin as an output, and I'm setting it low, which will enable the steppers. Next I'm going to connect the stepper motor object that I created earlier to its I.O. pins. Here's how we do that. This needs to be the same as this, the name of the stepper, connect to pins, and then the two pin numbers that we defined up here, one for step, one for direction. Now we're going to add three lines to make the motor go. First we're going to set the speed of the stepper. Here's a function that sets the speed of the stepper in steps per second. You'll notice that we set it to 200. Most stepper motors have 200 steps per revolution, so that means when the motor is up to full speed it will turn around one time per second. Then we're going to set the acceleration. This is one of the things that makes Speedy Stepper a better stepper library than most. It has the ability to accelerate the motor as it goes up to speed. By doing this, you can achieve vastly faster speeds. Next, we're going to make the motor actually move. This function is going to make the motor turn. And you can see here we're turning 200 steps. That will be one full rotation. Finally, I'm going to add a bit of code at the end to make the program stop. Okay, let's run the program. You'll notice it turned exactly one full rotation. Let's play with some of the numbers now. Instead of turning one time, let's have it turn three rotations. 200 times 3. And let's go faster. Let's go 400 steps per second, so it'll go twice as fast. Let's accelerate a lot faster. Crank that up to a thousand. Wow, 
Well, let's go even more turns. Let's go 10 turns and double the speed. Let's crank the speed up one more time, doubling it again. We're going to crank up the acceleration too. You'll notice it always stops in exactly the same place. Let's turn a half a turn. 100 steps. Let's do that a bunch of times. Stopping exactly where it started. Okay, this time we're going to go even slower so that we can really see the steps. I'm going to make it only turn a half a turn, get rid of all these guys. And I'm going to change the speed to 10. You can see each and every step. Now, having a lot of steps has some disadvantages. One is it reduces the resolution that you can move whatever you're moving to 1.8 degrees. The other is it can add a lot of vibration with the step, 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 step. So we're going to experiment with micro-stepping to see if we can make that better. Under the driver board, there's some pins to step micro-stepping. Now the first thing we need to do is disconnect the power. Then I'm going to pull off this little stepper board. And you can see right here, there are three configuration pairs of pins. I'm going to put in one jumper. And then put the controller driver board back in. What we've done with that jumper is configured the driver board for 2x micro-stepping. Now the motor will have 400 steps per revolution instead of 200. And each step will be half as many degrees. Now it's 0.9. To run this, I'm going to double the velocity so it actually goes the same speed as before. And I'm going to double the number of steps to 200 so it still goes a half a rotation. You can see each step now it's a little smoother. It's still sort of steppy and jerky, but it's much smoother than it was before. I've just put in one more jumper under the driver board. It's now configured for 8x micro-stepping. So here I'm going to increase the speed a whole bunch. Let's set it to 160. And now a half a rotation now is going to be 800 steps. At 8x micro-stepping, it's 1600 steps per revolution. You can see that it's much smoother now. Much smoother, much more resolution, and less jerky. There is a downside though. The speedy stepper driver has to work pretty hard to generate each step. There's a lot of math in there. By increasing the micro-stepping, it decreases the top velocity that the stepper motor can turn. Now you may only notice this problem when running multiple stepper motors. At some point you start running out of computing power in the little Arduino. Let's crank up the speed now. 8x micro-stepping goes kind of slow. 4,000. 8,000 for the acceleration. And let's go one full rotation. That's 1,600 steps. For that, let's put in a delay for a half a second. Now if we want to go backwards, we do pretty much the same thing except for we change the sign to negative. The Speedy Stepper library has many functions that we haven't talked about. For doing things like moving relative or absolute coordinates, moving in different units such as millimeters, rotations, as well as steps, lots of stuff. You can find documentation for everything online. Here I've searched for Speedy Stepper, go to GitHub, Scroll down and then click on documentation. 
Here you'll find the documentation for the entire library. Speedy Stepper has a companion library called Flexi Stepper. Both are written by the same guy and are almost identical, but they have one important difference. Speedy Stepper can generate faster steps. Flexi Step allows you to make changes to motions in progress. With Speedy Stepper, once you start moving, you can't change like where it's going or how fast it's going. You can tell it to stop and it will decelerate nicely to a stop. But you can't like say go someplace else or start going faster. Flexi Stepper allows you to do that. Again, you can find the documentation at GitHub, search for Flexi Stepper, then click on the GitHub link, scroll down, and there's the documentation. You can buy your stepper motors from many different sources. There are some on Amazon that are just fine. I prefer to get mine from Palulu. Here you can see that they have a lot of different sizes. These NEMA 8s are very small. What we've been demonstrating today is a NEMA 17. They get bigger, NEMA 23. You'll find on the Palulu site good information like the voltage and current rating. Now, how do you choose? The stepper driver boards that we're using really only go up to about 2 amps and that's pushing it. So here there's a lot of choices that are 1.7 amps, 1.2 amps, and these are all suitable for the little stepper driver board that we've been using. And here's the voltage. Now I like to use a voltage that's around 3. A lot of the stepper motors on Amazon are 12 volt motors. Now they work fine, they're going to have a lower current, but the downside is they're going to have lower torque at faster speeds. By having the motor voltage several times lower than the power supply voltage, it'll allow the motor to spin much faster with greater torque. Let's talk about the driver boards now. One of my favorite sources again is Palulu. They have many drivers. My favorite are ones that use this chip, this 8825. I also like the ones that use the 4988. So this is the little module that I plugged into that carrier board on the Arduino. The carrier board can hold one or two or three or four. Let's look at this in more detail. One thing you may have noticed is that we're using a 20 volt power supply and a motor around three volts. How is that possible? Well it's this controller board that makes that possible. But there's one very important thing that you have to do otherwise you can fry both the motor and the controller board. There's this little potentiometer right here on the controller board and that's where you set the current. Now the motor should have a current rating. The motor that I've been using has a 1.7 maximum current rating. I tend to run less than that. So you set the little potentiometer to a 1.7 current value. And it's a little tricky to do that, so you have to read the documentation that comes with the controller board to figure out exactly how to set that. Here's the Arduino shield that I've been using. You can see it's very inexpensive. $7 and you get two of them. This doesn't include the little stepper driver module, so you have to buy those separately. Also on Amazon, you get the same thing with the four stepper modules. These modules are completely compatible with the Plulu ones that we looked at earlier, but I like the Plulu ones a little better because they're better documented and it's easier to figure out how to set the current. But it is possible to make these work. If I don't want a shield and I just want to drive one stepper motor, this is a good product, the Big Easy driver from SparkFun. It has kind of the same pot, it does the micro stepping, and it has a step and direction input just like we've been using. Finally, I'm going to show you one more driver option. This is a product on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive at $34. What's great about it is that it can power larger motors. You can see up here the motors can go up to 4.2 amps and up to 50 volts. The Speedy Stepper Library will work fine with this because this driver module accepts step and direction, just like the little boards that we used before. You would connect the step pin up here, this to ground, the direction pin here, this to ground, the enable pin here, this to ground. Then dip switches allow you to set the motor's current and the micro-stepping resolution. 